One time I made my sister and I, we were on this road trip and she's afraid of everything. And I wanted her to try the crickets. Oh no. You know when you drive through Nevada and yeah. to California? Yes. You go, so I was like, just taste. And she was like, no, I'm like, ha. Ah. <laughs> and I was like, just do it, it's funny, please. And she was like, no. And I had it in, or she had it in her hand like this. And I just hit her hand enough and it went right into her fucking mouth. <gasps> but we were filming it for us. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then for five minutes, all you heard was, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you killed her. You couldn't even get, you no, we were it. laughing so hard you couldn't even get the laugh out. We were like, <laughs> it was, yeah. it's yeah. our favorite. We watch it, we send it to each other more than we should. And we are like, <laughs> 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 there's you know. nothing better. There's nothing better. Oh my god, I just love to laugh. Honestly, but, that's but like when you when you laugh like that, like to the point where you can barely speak and you have cramps in either your face or your side, or like you have tears coming down your face, like that is that is genuine conversation. That is genuine friendship with somebody. Like you're connecting with somebody. Yeah, and that's the best thing. Like my mom, you know, growing up, she was always like, "You have to be a doctor. You have to be a doctor. Get in the medical field." You know, token Indian thing. And now I tell my mom, I'm like, laughter's the best medicine. <laughs> She's like, fuck you. I'm like, <laughs> she hates it when I like rip her. <laughs> but honestly, it. it's true because with even the podcast name, like I was so dark and down when I created the podcast and nothing makes me feel better than laughing. Like when yeah. you get that gut laughter. Yeah. And that's how other people, when they come to see you and you don't know what the fuck's going on in their life and they get that gut laughter. There's no other feeling like no. it. There's just not. It, that's, I mean, I, th I think that's kind of like, for me, it's the ultimate drug, right? Like, and I didn't know that's what it was because I would always be just hanging out with friends in the backyard or ladies night or whatever and just being myself, just talking because I'm comfortable with you, right? Like, and I realize I just have to get to that comfort level quickly with strangers yeah. because then they'll be able to see the authentic me. And they won't see two different versions, like the the scared, like, oh, my God, will you like me or not? And then the comfortable. And so when I started social media, I just I pretended and it was I did it for my work wife, who's now my one of my best friends. And because she told she's like, just record and send it. And I was like, done. And yeah. so because before that, I hated seeing myself on the camera. Like, I was like, I don't want to see myself. I look like a potato. I don't like this. I Because, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s. We had a certain image that yeah. we had to, had to go towards. Yeah, and then, blonde, tall, and skinny. I talk about it all the time. Right, and then especially add our culture in there. And so yeah. you see the Bollywood Indians. They're tall. They're beautiful. They're, like, they're Miss Universe half the time. And I'm like, how do you expect me to compete with this? Right? And yeah. so I just I kind of figured out a better way to socialize, which was through being funny and being sarcastic and being an asshole. And so... <laughs> Now it's coming out. <laughs> Listen, I love that so much. I feel like if you're just tuning in, we're with Pinky Patel. And oh, I we just, love, we just went in. It doesn't even matter yeah. because that's the whole point of it. And I love that you went right into um, like culture and, and everything. Like I'm Italian and Jewish. And oh, I God, feel like first of all, <laughs> honey, the guilt on guilt on guilt on guilt. I can't get away from it. I feel bad about everything. I feel bad for just breathing. I'm like... I'm, Sorry, I didn't mean to fucking need air. Yeah. Um, but I, <laughs> growing up, I, I feel the same way and I talk about it a lot. I was never like pretty or cool or I was a little bit chubby and I was a little bit That's curvy. hard to believe. I, I swear to God, listen. I, we need pictures behind I'm us 36 <laughs> years old and I finally learned what fucking gut health is. Yeah, same. Um, but I'm like 43. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Take ash ashwagandha. It's my own word, and I can't say that. <laughs> Listen, you gotta take all kinds of shit. But growing up, like, also we ate bread and pasta. Yeah. Turns out I have a gluten allergy. I'm the worst Italian. Also, like, You're gluten disgraced disgusting. Italians. They think they hate, my family hates me. That's another reason why I have the podcast. But I never. All I had was my sense of humor. It yeah. was what got me out of trouble. It's what made me cool. I was really poor growing up. So I didn't have the advantage of like fine. I just yeah. had to be funny. And I feel like now that we've made it a career, that is what makes people love you so much. I feel like it has to be so easy for you to go into a room now because you're so relatable and just kind and easy and funny. I mean, it's it's not easy. I, I talk about it on in this year's tour. I get nervous diarrhea. Like I, I, I like I finally it. found a breakfast that I can eat that does not make me want to go and have runny shits all day until my show. But the 
other side is I can't eat like I can't eat anything after breakfast until after the show. So the first tour, I was doing matinees a lot. So it was perfect, right? I can do the show at three, eat dinner at six, relax, veg out. We got used to that, Ravina and I. And then this year, this tour, they're like, oh, you're doing eight o'clock shows. I was like, fuck, what am I going to be able to eat? <laughs> so I, I still get nervous. I still pace in the green room. You like, do? And especially like recently, I just came off of, you know, that hysterectomy I had. And so I was down for two months. So I wasn't doing any shows for two months. Usually it's roughly like six weeks. But having summers off and winters off, I, st- I start to get stir crazy. Like, and then for the first sh- set of shows back, I like obsessively have to listen to the last show I did so I can get back in the cadence of things and how I say it. Cause I- I'm very active on stage. Yeah. I do this weird yoga thing now. I don't understand it. It is what it is. Don't, I love it. I'm always like walking weird. People are like, what is she doing? I'm like, I'm nervous. And so this is how I'm letting my nervous energy out. Wait, th- wait, this is important because I, okay. So if you, everyone knows this. I started therapy a couple of years ago. I'm very into therapy very into healing the trauma because I was fuck, breaking the generational kind of, yeah. do the things. Okay, the I feel words. like a dickhead saying it, <laughs> no, but it's true. And I like therapy, okay, and I needed it. And I feel happier. Hey, but More power to you. Thank you. But I tried the, my therapist gave me the tray exercises. What is that? So basically they're, girl, just fuck, come to my house at 8 a.m. I look like an <laughs> asshole. I, uh, I have this like yoga mat and then there are specific poses that apparently released trauma that we hold into our body. Like, which wasn't ever something I thought about. No. I thought it was like a mental thing. But there's certain poses that you do and it releases from your body and it's supposed to heal your nervous system. Can I tell you, number one, I weep. The hip openers are very intense. Oh, the hip flexors? Yeah. Uh-huh. When they open up? Yeah, what do they call it? Like a frog? Are you opening your chakras? Yeah, listen. <laughs> I, <laughs> your chakras are... I'm like, Lisa, all just get are, out, Lisa. All the Indians are going to be like, Pinky, that's not how you say that. Okay. <laughs> you know what we're talking about, yeah, okay? Yeah. And then, but I feel... So I much feel better. so much better. Yeah. My My nervous system feels better. Yeah. So that would make sense that you're up there doing yoga and shit. It's it's about I get I get so ner like once I'm in it, I the flow just comes and I just do because I'm just telling you stories about my life. So I'm not it's it's easy because I'm not stealing somebody else's content. Obviously, it's my life and it's just my ridiculous outtake like outlook on that said life, right? And like the situations that I find myself in. So for me, it's like I'm just telling it, I pretend that we're just having ladies' night in my backyard, and I'm just shooting the shit with my friends. And that's what's helped me overcome the stage fright. Because if I if I look and also I f- I enforce that the house lights need to be off completely, so I can only see the first row of people, yeah. <laughs> just the first like ten people, and then I can handle that. <laughs> Wait, that's good. Yeah, I, I was I, like, I don't want to see anybody's eyeballs after the first row. I don't care if you have to like turn all the lights off and get a like go to Home Depot and get a spotlight for me, but I don't want to see anybody beyond the first row. Yeah, I feel like that's a fair thing. You know what's funny though? You look at you and you follow you and you wouldn't think that you would ever have stage fright. Nobody does. Ever. Every every time I said it for the second tour, people were like, what? You get stage fright? Yeah. But you make content. I was like, you don't understand. I'm in the privacy of my vagina cave making this (laughs) video and it's a one and done. Like I'm not reshooting again, unless I said something like which was mean and like, all right, let's, let's, you know, I'm taking my anger out on this poor person. <laughs> do they deserve it? Maybe, but not right probably now. Probably they do. <laughs> they probably do. That's why we're dummy shaming you. But, <laughs> but they don't. Like, the first tour, they were like, oh, my God, you're so tiny. I was like, how tall did you think? Like, <laughs> I know why you thought I was tiny, because I always sit in my desk chair, and you can always see the ceiling behind me, and you guys don't realize I'm in a basement, which means lower, like, logistically, right? Because coming yeah. from the design world, I know these things, but then I take it for granted. And so people are just like, oh my God, you're so tiny, you're cute. I'm like, yes, I'm tiny, but mighty. Yes, okay. you are. I've got girth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm girthy. <laughs> I take up space. <laughs> I'm taking up my space. <laughs> Don't take it away from me. <laughs> but they, they do, they get really, sh- they're like, oh my God, I would have never guessed. I'm like, how do you think I stay so skinny? Yeah. <laughs> I know, but there's something, it's diarrhea. Wait, what is the breakfast that doesn't give you the diarrhea? It's just, it's two scrambled eggs, Uh hash browns, and bacon. Fine. Yeah. I'll have it for you next time. (laughs) 
I'm glad to know that's the thing. It's like the bacon is like, we're not going there. That's It's Pinky. like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Listen, I think it's comforting to know that you, because you have 5 million, 5.3 million followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You have a huge following. And it's... you're a mom. You're so funny. And so to know someone like you still experiences stage fright. Oh, my God. There's yeah. something comforting about that. And like, I, like, I feel... You know, like when when you're a consumer, right? Growing up, right? Watched a lot of TV, watched a lot of movies. I was telling Ravina, like I used to be such a movie buff. Like I would always want to see the latest movies that came out. I was always on top of it. Like not obsessive fan, like like the Swifties or anything like that, like the <laughs> crazies, you know. But I, I I liked my certain actors and actresses and stuff like that. I've always wanted to be famous. I always wanted to like be on the spotlight, make people happy. I just because whenever I watch these movies, I always felt good. Yeah, I was like, I want to do that for other people, right? And then it just it wasn't in the cards, and so I just had to kind of do what I was meant to do based on whatever my culture told me to do. And then I just got my second wind. And, and I know that if I tried to do this when I was 18, it never would have happened because I didn't have enough life experiences. I didn't have enough character growth to be able to be such an asshole on stage. Like, and, and in my content to be such an asshole. But like, but then like we said outside, you know, at the end of shows, I'm like this big rock star during shows. And then I go home and I'm, I'm just your mom. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, like it humbles you so much. And they're like, you're not funny, mom. I'm like, actually 5.4 million people think I'm hilarious. Okay. <laughs> yeah. First of all, 5.4, my bad. <laughs> and also kids are fucking assholes. But, but I raise but them like that them. on purpose. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, if you're not raising sarcastic assholes, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, they will not come crying to me because somebody was sarcastic with them and they didn't understand. Yeah, they're tough. And, yeah. Like, I need them. The, the world is too scary. So I need them to be thick skinned. Yeah. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't want other people to mess with their mental health. Yeah. Like, too many people messed with mine. And so I learned my lesson. And I'm like, no way, Jose. Did they? Was it, What was it like growing up? Because also, I think it's so funny. You're like, it wasn't in the cards. No, bitch. It was very much in the cards. Just it later. just was yeah. later. And I think, like, look, I I turned 36 this year. And I'm not really, like, an ageist. I've tried to really, like, never care. I'll get married when I do whatever. Me and my partner tried for kids. And it's been, like, a it's, it's just a journey as a woman, period. Yeah. You know? And I think it's so inspiring and exciting to see women popping off not in their 20s. Yeah. Because I wouldn't know shit in my 20s. I it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been received well. Yeah. In my tw it gets better with age. It does. It, I like, feel like. There I thought there was this one article or something and they were like they were listing off all these actors and actresses that got big later in life and they told you like Harrison Ford was this old and and so and so was this old and I was like, "See, I'm just I'm just catching up to every like I'm doing it." It's fine. I'm not going to die right now. I'm not halfway through life. No. I'm not in my midlife crisis. I'm going to live to be 100. So I still got a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, in Indian culture, you will. Like, right. So I'm you taking girls my are <laughs> <laughs> the Fucking magnesium sulfate or whatever. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so many vitamins. Oh, God. And I just take them. Um, okay. So let's talk like Indian culture because you were taught to be right. You were born in India. Yes. And I, you came here at three? Three. Yeah, babe, just a little baby. I was, yeah. And what was life like growing up with your parents with such a strict Indian culture? I mean, being a comic wouldn't have been something that you no. could have presented. Well, I didn't even, that was never in my head. Like, I, I, yes, I was a consumer. I loved watching that stuff. And I, I was like, I would love to do that. But then when, you know, I even would, you know, career day happens. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an actress. Okay, like... Teachers like 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 yeah, you could do that. It's like, bitch, why did you lie to me? <laughs> like you, you're saying that I could be an astronaut. You know I'm not good at science, and you're encouraging this behavior. This is ridiculous, you know. <laughs> and, and then I go home and I tell my mom, oh, we had career day because you know you want to tell tell your. I was excited. She's like, no, this is no. We're in America because to her, if I wanted to be famous, I had to be in Bollywood movies. And she's like, no, but we're in America and they're in India. How are you going to do this? Because I never watched, wow. like, I didn't watch MTV until I was in high high school. That's crazy. Yeah, like, I we we watched, we had basic, 
basic channels. And so, like, yeah, I would watch, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, like, TGI Friday. Remember those shows? Yes! On ABC or whatever yes! it was. Like, I would watch all of those, but there was no, like, my husband now, he asks, he, would, like, would talk about music. I'm like, oh, I like that song. And he's like, oh, it's Prince. I was like, oh, really? He's like, how do you not know this? It's Prince. I was like, why are you taking it for granted that because you know these songs, I know these songs? I was like, I never took it for granted because I know DIY shit that you should, like, can you find a stud? No. Okay? Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, do you know what a stud are 16 you. inches apart? <laughs> Wait, heat up, but you know that. Yeah. See, strengths and weaknesses, bitch. Listen, the masculinity <laughs> is very balanced in this relationship with it's, the femininity. It's, it's, we're a little flipped. So it's I love like, it. That's okay. I have a stud. Her name's Lisa, and I love it there, nice. too. So it's, per- I found one as well. But, like, I mean, my parents, for, for boomer Indian parents, first time, you know, immigrants here, me being first generation raised here, they're, they're pretty liberal. They're, they were not as strict as a lot of, the boomer Indian parents now that I've seen growing up, um, they they're more like my parents just cared. All they cared about was don't embarrass us in our community. Make sure you're getting good grades, and that was it. And so I did that to a T. And then I, in the background, I did whatever the fuck I wanted to do, as long as I was getting good grades and I was a good girl in front of the community. I didn't have to worry about anything. Now my brother didn't get that message, and he fucked shit up left and right. <laughs> And I look I What I was he doing? Yeah, no. He's we're being like, bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But is he the younger one? Yeah. Okay, see, I'm an and older sister boy. to a younger brother boy. Yeah. My younger brother boy, uh, obviously we've established that with brother. Um <laughs> it's okay, he okay, well. thank you so it's much. Early. Clearly I'm nervous making I'm trying to do my Whatever. You're not American Idol. You what? Get nervous. No. No. You weren't from Simon Cowell, that asshole. Okay? It does not Listen to me. No. You don't understand no. why I find such peace with you saying stage fright. Girl, I'm fucking nervous. People will not take me seriously. But I do. You know what's funny? When I was 16, I wasn't. I wasn't nervous. I was yeah. a little bit nervous. It but was, you're also cocky at 16. It's, but also at 16, like, you're jaded. Yeah. Like, you're like, I don't, I knew I was funny. I didn't know if I was the best singer, but I knew I was funny. And I knew I could get away with anything with my sense of humor. Mm-hmm. So that's what we rolled with. And there was so much going on behind the scenes that it wasn't like, oh, I want to do well. It was like, I have to do well mm. for my family to get yeah. us out of a situation that we're in. The pressure was different, you know? So I, yeah. I wasn't like, I hope you like me. I was like, what up, bitch? I am here to change my family's life. You know, it was yeah. then as I got older and, you know, like I've heard you talk about this before. The comment section, no. the the people, yeah. the message boards. <laughs> that's when you're like, oh, my God, wait, what is happening? They're cruel. They're so mean. I've been lucky. Yeah. I've been so lucky (laughs) that, like, I I could, with the amount of people that suppose uh, the follower count, right? With the amount of people that follow me, I'm shocked that I don't get more negative comments than positive. Like, the majority of my comments have been extremely positive. There's only been 1% maybe in the four years that I've started this that have been like, whoa, how dare you say that? But... Again, Ravina has done a great job of calming me down because my first reaction is like, what the fuck, bitch? I was like, game on, motherfucker. (laughs) But she's like, no, you don't know this person. You don't even know if they're a child. And she's like, she like calms me down. Wait, Ravina, can I hire you too to calm my psychotic ass down? Are you for hire? For people that don't know who Ravina is, who we're just talking to. She's my handler. She's your hand. Good for, we all need, listen, just regular people need handlers. Oh my God. Could you imagine? Ravina, can you start a company where we just hire you and your people? Handle her. Handle her. figure something out. Handle her. (laughs) No, but like, you know, I, I have a good support system at home. Like my husband is phenomenal with not only keeping me humble, but also calming me down when I get agitated with these bad comments. And then again, Ravina and like, I have a really good support system with friends as well. But like, and my method is when I see somebody who had the audacity to put a dumbass comment in, yeah, I pin it to the top and let all of my followers eat them up. Genius. Yeah. And then, so I leave it pinned for 24 hours and then I unpin it. So then it just, you know, so they, they get the message, like, don't fuck with us because the yeah. pussy posse will come after you. And then. Yes. And so when TikTok took it away, I was like, what the fuck is this? 
Yeah, because that's genius. They yeah. do your dirty work. They yeah. love you. Yeah. I love that you have a supportive system. I think being the partner of someone who um, does what we do for a living it can go two ways. It's yeah. either like w- no or so wonderful and so supportive. Has your family been supportive as well now that you've taken off? Like, was there support from the beginning? Yeah, I mean... And I only ask, here's why I ask it, not even to start anything. It's, I am I am Italian, but I'm not first generation. So my family, it was a little proud. I've married into an Armenian family mm-hmm. and Armenian culture. Like, I love my mother-in-law. She's the absolute best that she can be. A hundred percent. I love how you said that. Dude, yeah. She does yeah. all the tools that she has at her age. Yeah. At she, her disposal. She's and it is only it. one hammer. Yeah. But she uses it to the best of her ability. But it's difficult watching um, my partner want to succeed with just natural cultural worriness that my Armenian mother-in-law has. It's, it's hard. And yeah. it's heavy on me sometimes. I'm like, first of all, I'm not... Hungry. I don't <laughs> want anything else to eat. And number two, I'll be yeah. fine. It's a five minute drive. Yes. It's yes. okay. Yeah. I'll call you when I'm there. Like there's so many worry things. Yeah. I've started the gig before I started the gig. Yeah. No, my so growing up the way I did, right? Our people, Indian people, are the biggest people pleasers. And we talk about this in my own podcast. Like we we are so conditioned to keep the peace and to compromise. It, it, women, girls versus boys, men, right? You have to keep the peace. You just have to keep the family going. Like, it's not worth it. Compromise. People please, people please, people please. But this comedy thing, not social media, that came first. And then the comedy thing happened almost a year and a half later. Um, well, a year to the T later was when I had my first show. But when the tour started, like I, uh, this was the first thing that I fought tooth and nail for. Like I put my foot down. I was like, I am doing this and I will compromise with you. You will meet me halfway, but I am doing this because I was told that we can do this however we want to do this. So the person that in, that got me started, her name is Stephanie and she's the general manager of the Chicago Improv in Chicago, obviously. Duh. And it's okay, brother, brother, brother. said it 18 times. It's fine. <laughs> and so, like, you know, I didn't even know that this was a possibility, stand-up mm. comedy. Because, again, I was – we didn't. I didn't have therapy growing up. So the best way for me to handle it was to be a sarcastic asshole with my friends. And so the, the sarcasm was my therapy, making people laugh, having that quick wit. That was my therapy, right? And then it, it kind of just morphed into – this is good for social media because people like the snarkiness and, and the jaded outlook on life. And then she approaches me and she's like, I think you do great with comedy. And I was like, what is what is five minutes going to hurt? What is 10 minutes going to hurt? And then she throws out the word headliner. I was like, I know. I know what those words mean. I know what that means. Are you crazy? You want me to do what? You want me to stand up and talk like that? That's when that nervous diarrhea started. It was well before my first show. Yeah. Right. And so and and she was like, you know. You can do this. I know traditional comedians, they just, they stay on the road for months on end. However, you can do this how you want to do this. Because I was like, I don't mind doing this, but I'm not going to do this if it means it's going to fuck up my family. Like, my family is what's always going to be there for me. My job is not. Whatever job I pick, Mm -hmm. whether it be a corporate job or whether it be self-employment or whether it be stand-up comedy. Like, that that can ebb and flow. But my family is what's going to, and I don't want to miss important events for my kids. I don't want to miss like, you know, what if there's emergencies or stuff like that. So every time I put somebody on my team, I was like, first and foremost, if something happens with my family, I'm dropping everything and going home. And they're like, understood. I was like, you will not fight me on it. And if you don't like that outlook, then I will see you later. I will go hire somebody else. Mm -hmm. And everybody Mm -hmm. has been really respectful of that. And because I fought so hard for this and because Stephanie said that you could do this however you want to, when I talked to my husband about it, I was like, listen, she said I could do it how I want to. So if that means I'm going out once a month to do shows, that's what that means. If I'm going out every other weekend, that's what that means. But I need you to compromise with me Mm -hmm. because I really want to do this. And we just kind of made it work and we figured it out. 
and then he we had to flip roles, right? Usually it's it's the men that go out mm -hmm. and travel for work, and the women stay home because we're a little bit more equipped to handle that. Mm -hmm. So everything. <laughs> But he's, I mean, if he wasn't holding down the fort, I wouldn't be able to do this, right? And I just, I have to keep reminding him of that because he's he's constantly, like, we were talking about it at breakfast. Like, he's, he gets, he feels like he gets left behind. And I'm like, no, babe, Aww. it's not that you're left behind. It's that, you know, I, yes, I would love for you to do everything, but then who's going to be at home? If, can we hire nannies? We need a, a, a geriatric nanny. And a young nanny. Do we do we have that money? Shit. You know, like yeah. until we can hire nannies and bodyguards so that you can come with me on these things, we have to kind of, you know, figure this out. And I'll do the best that I can. I'll meal prep as much as I can. But the support has all been there. Like I have an amazing group of friends in town that I've just accumulated through PTA and just like living my life. And they're like, if you like, let us know if you need anything. Like, I can wow. literally text one of them, be like, yo, can you go check? They're not answering my phone, and I called everybody at home, and I'm getting worried. They would go and check and do a wellness check for me. Like, yeah. I have that it support system in real life, and that is the only way that this is going to work. Like, it's it's not all about social media. It's not all about being famous. It's not all about, like, the public person. If you don't have that at home, that support system – to keep you grounded, to keep you humble, to keep you going, to 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 tell you and remind you what's really important, the rest is not going to come. Right. Like that other stuff comes because they piss me the fuck off every day, you know? Yeah. Like, but I think that's why we watch so many celebrities, influencers, whatever have such a big crash and burn because yeah. that's missing and you do need it. You need that. Like nobody's in their life telling them to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Meanwhile, I have all these people to tell me to shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. <laughs> like, okay. Stephanie said you can do it your way, but also shut the fuck up. And you're like, got it. I hear that. You know, it's so nice because I think that like uh, in 2024, I'm so happy that you had somebody come to you and be like, you can do it however you want. Yeah. Because after the pandemic, what we're learning is you have to do it however you want. Yeah. Everything we knew before no longer exists. Even my friends who are actresses and actors, SAG-AFTRA is a mess. The oh. writer's strike is a mess. Mm -hmm. We're in an inflation. Like, nothing is what it used to be. And if you're not fighting for yourself, you will get left behind. However, as a people, as a recovering people pleaser... Yes. Yes. And it is so fucking We should make t-shirts. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag recovering people, please. Are welcome. I am in this weird transition now where I'm going to be brave and ask for what I want. But there's still that old side of me that's like, no, 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 but don't do that. But don't do that. I'm like right in the middle, close to where I'm like, I can do it. Have you found yourself coming fully to the other side now or have you struggled with with that like between like just going with the flow and putting yeah, my foot down i guess from not from no longer being a people pleaser to still because even if you're like i want to change my mind listen i've been a th people pleaser for 34 years yeah. you know it's only been the past 2 years that i'm like i'm not going to be that anymore there's still habits and old beliefs and old no, ways of for thinking sure. that i'm like shut the <laughs> fuck up we're not people pleasers anymore you know no i mean i still have those tendencies especially because culturally but then also work wise working in the corporate world, you end up being a people pleaser in the corporate world. Like you have to do what your boss tells you. Otherwise you get a bad year in review and then you get fired. And it's like, how am I going to put food on the table? Right? Like you start snowballing. Like you just think of the worst case scenarios. And so I like, I have people to encourage me. And, and this happened just recently. It's funny that you said that because we were in a group chat talking about just things that we needed to do. And my best friend, she sends something in the group chat and like, and I know I need to stop this habit. Like, so when I wake up, I just, I look at my phone right away to turn the alarm off, but then I get distracted Same. and I start going into, oh, what messages did I miss or what? The, and then I answer messages and I'm in half sleep mode. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. <laughs> and so I was like, what do you guys think? And, and the, the two of them, because Ravina was in the group chat, the two of them were like, oh, this is... This is, it's like, but what do you think? And I was like, oh, but you guys are okay with it. So I'm okay with it. And my best friend's like, no, no, but what do you think? Like, what do you want? It's okay if you don't like it. And I was like, okay, 
how about this? And she's like, okay, that's fine. You're and so I have people to encourage me. Oh, I to, love like, that, Ravina. Yeah. Ravina, come on the show. Ravina, come here. <laughs> Ravina, just get over here. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that we need just for a second, then you you can go back to <laughs> But this is a fa- this is a family. This turned into a family thing. Because you know what I like about you, Ravina? I feel like Do you want to be on this side? People want to be How do I do this? Georgie, sure. should we right just here, right here, here, you want to take Okay. Mhm. Oh. Okay. Hi, Ravina. Hi. <laughs> 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 Little cuties. So Thank you for joining Ravina, us. Ravina, welcome to So me. Funny It Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for traveling Ravina, far and wide you. to yeah, be here. <laughs> Listen, I want to ask you because I think that people want to be the best of, of friends, partners, handlers. And I think that in meaning well, they don't... Um, set boundaries with their friends and their loved ones. They just also, yeah. you want to people please yes. your own best friends and, and people. So how is it on the other side as a friend to be like, I love you queen. And the answer is still going to be a hard no. Right. Oh, she's great at that. Yeah, okay. What does I that look like? For because, that. I mean, from my point Wait, of view, let me make sure. If we oh yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Is it going to fall? I'm holding okay, it. Okay. Don't worry. This is, oh. And I'm not cutting any of this out. Yeah, she's a professional. Big, yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah. Like that? I'm a professional. <laughs> you guys, this is called So Funny It Hurts. Yeah. And we're all just going to talk in the same all fucking right. microphone. Same microphone. <laughs> okay. I feel like we're going to do a harmony here. We're going to do a show <laughs> later on. You can catch it. <laughs> you can do it. Um, no, so for me, I just, I always keep her best interest in mind. So I try to think of like, okay, she wants to respond to this random nonsensical comment but i'm like it's not worth it you're gonna feed the fire like they they want that from her um things like that or like when she gets nervous i'll tell her like i'll remind her like well this is just you know 10 minutes of your life i know you're nervous or like if you're nervous for a podcast or for opening someone else like i'll just tell her it's just a temporary amount of your life i get why you're nervous it's not her usual um you know crowd of people but uh yeah, she's amazing. I just I try to. Yeah, I'm listening yeah. so intently. Yeah, because that's such good advice. Yeah. It's just ten minutes of your life. Yeah, we yeah. I think as people are like so hyper focused on either staying present, which is what we're taught, or thinking super super long term. Right. But if you're like, babe, it's just 10 everything minutes. is temporary. Yeah. You know. So and like, she, Ravina sees every single. She sees and hears every single show. And so, like, the audience, you know, I'll, I'll come off the stage, and she, she could tell from my face if I liked my set or not. And she's like, no, you did a good job. And I trust her opinion on that because she's seen every single show. Mm-hmm. Versus, like, my husband has only seen a couple of shows. And so, you know, and also he's not my So his opinion audience. is worthless. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm You're going to get me in trouble, <laughs> Michaela. No, no. <laughs> Same PB like, forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but and I remind him, I'm like, you're not my target audience, and that's okay. Like for him, he feels like he needs to be all. It needs to be all or nothing. And I'm like, no. Like, you uh, look at Jerry Seinfeld. His wife hates his comedy. You know, and I'm like, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm like, you could be Mrs. Jerry Seinfeld. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're Mrs. Pinky Patel. It's okay. <laughs> but like, Ravina sees it, and and she helps me to stay really grounded. Like. The life that we have when we hit the club or the theater or the whatever venue it is, and the life that we have when we leave, it's two different things. Like when we're there, we it, we are in job mode. This is our job. My job is to make people laugh. Her job is to help wherever it's needed. And then we get back to our hotel room and we veg out. We have like girls sleepover sometimes. We have a routine. Yeah. And and. I was telling her on the way here, I love it when my friends can take advantage of these trips for like, I call them mommy vacations for them. So I've told them as long as they're willing to do A, B, and C, they can room with me. They don't have to pay for the room, right? Because I have to get a room anyways for the two of us. And so they use that as like a de-stressor. And I love that for them because I can give them that opportunity. But the flip side is you got to help a bitch. Like you got to all hands on deck. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not vacation. And so when I have the friends come once in a while, it's great. But then when it's just the two of us, I'm like, oh, it's yeah. relieving because when we get back to the room, it's like the stress of 
of being somebody that because that's a lot of expectation mm -hmm. whether it's a thousand people in an audience or 20 people yeah they're expecting something from me and I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies uh -huh. and that extrovert tendencies drains me so much like the only reason I haven't been taking naps is that fucking ashwagandha. Okay, like I'm getting George order on Amazon right now. Though. Done. I was already I already ordered it earlier. Thank you so much. Okay, can we get the Prime discount as well? Yeah. Like okay. I, you got a subscription. Bought it in value pack. We actually have a hundred bottles coming. So. Good, because I'm fucking exhausted. Yeah. But no, and and but like sh she helps not only with social media things. Like I talk to Ravina about a lot of like. Things that I don't understand about the ever-changing culture that we find ourselves in. Right. I'm like, hear me out. And like, sh she can help me understand these things, which in turn helps me to have a better relationship with my kids. I was going to say. Yes. It, like, I feel like if the past two or three years didn't happen, my relationship with my older son might, it, it might still be good, but not as good as it is right now. Because there's a lot of things that, I, that we talk about. Then my husband's like, what are you even saying? And I'm like, what's between A and B? Uh -huh, see yourself see you out. out. <laughs> you know what? And then Ravina, I'll let you go back. But oh, I um, I you. think it says a lot about your character. <laughs> well, wait, I want to compliment you first. Come back. Oh, okay, okay. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, someone took some Oshkawan today. She's out of oh here. Oh, my gosh. I, know. I drink a lot of coffee. You no, know, <laughs> I want to tell you that I feel like as an entertainer also, it's difficult to find somebody that you don't have to be on with all the right. time. There's yeah. so much pressure. Yeah. I just sometimes won't even have my friends around because I don't want to be on. They don't sure. expect it, but I do. Like, yeah. I don't want them to be bored yeah. or anything. And so to be that yep. is like one of the most special gifts for friends and for entertainers. And so you guys are so lucky to have each other. So I'm glad I got to highlight you it. for a second. I love it. That's a big deal. I love, job. I love you. Thank so, you. Yeah. I love you too. Well, thank so you, Queen. Love. Would right. you like another cup of coffee? I'll get it for I'm you okay. out there. She my said, no, like I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> thank she you, me my heartbeat. <laughs> No, you know, I think it's so funny. I, I was dealing with this other comic last week. And again, the same thing. Her team is just amazing. It's just one other woman. And she's amazing. And I do. I feel like sometimes the behind the scenes, they, they need that love because they keep it going. It's, it's, it's important. It's, yeah. And it's. It truly is, it's 100% love. Like, when people think love, they think of the frou-frou. But when I think of love, I think of the frou-frou and the realistic. And, like, I think of all of it, right? Like, I need I need to surround myself with people who are going to, like, no, bitch, you know, get down to our level, right? Like, prime example, when I'm with my ladies group, right? Like, we, I do an annual ladies night. Because we don't get to get together that often, right? Being moms, we're so busy. Yeah. So I enforce every June, I have a ladies' night, and we, we get together, and it's BYOB, BYOC, BYOW. So bring your own beer. Yes! It's bring your own chair, because I don't have enough camping chairs. <laughs> and it's bring your own weed, and it's build your own nachos, because it's a nacho <sighs> bar. And we just, we just, we go until the last person standing whoever that is and we have so much fun oh my god but when we go when we decide to go out and if people and like and if people like they know when people recognize me in the wild before I do and they literally will like form a barrier around like they just they just do it like my one of my best friends Michelle she will clock an incoming and she's just she's just automatically just like starts shifting so that she like block. I'm like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Well, you need it because I'm not. We were it's just crazy. standing outside right now because I'm irresponsible and because I told you to come too early and I'm a mess. But we were standing outside and this woman literally beeline to you. We're just standing, by the way, in just a regular little Alcohol, area. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God, I just have to tell you I love you. Like she came right up to you. You handled it so great. And then she was like, OK. Bye. Like they love you, but you know what? It wasn't it that easy. In the beginning, I would deny it. Oh, like, you said you weren't you. Yeah, people would With come the up to me. Crown yeah. and the pink hair. You're like, it's not me. No, this was before I had the pink hair. Oh, oh, oh. And I wouldn't wear crowns because I was so like, they're gonna think I'm an idiot. I'm gonna wear crowns in public. No, it's fabulous. And so before I dyed the hair, before all of that, people would start coming up to me like, oh my god, are you? And I'm like, no. Like I would look them dead in the eye. No. And then they would look at me like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. 
<laughs> and then now, three years later, they come up to like, oh my God, are you? I'm like, yes, I am. You did. And I don't care if they think I'm Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Catherine Zeta Jones. I'm like, I will be whoever you want me to be. Yes. To make you happy. But right they now. know you're Pinky Patel, honey. <laughs> you know what's so funny about you and your PTA and your mom talk? I used to, I don't know why this came to my brain. I love that. Have you seen the movie Practical Magic? Yes, I love that movie. Okay, I love that movie. Yes. And remember how they have the call tree? Yeah. And the girls were kind of mean to her. But at the end, when she finds her magic, she uses the call tree and all the PTA moms come together in the circle to rid that fucking asshole yes. off in his spirit. Yes. That's what it's giving. Like, yes. you've got your... There's nothing more special. I say this all the time. Aside from comedians and women and everything, there's nothing better than moms. Oh, I feel sure. like moms. There's are... nothing better than women. Than women. It, than cause, women. Because my whole thing when I when I started this whole social media and all that, I never used the hashtag mom or hashtag mom life or hashtag PTA. Like I wanted to separate myself from that that job that role that I have because I'm like I'm more than a mom. Like I've always said that. Like I'm I'm allowed to be my own person. I'm allowed to love you, but then be like, I need a break and I need to go have dinner with my friends because I need a break and I'm doing too much. And you have to be okay with that. And that does not mean that you are a bad mother. It just means that you know your limitations and you need to take a step back, regroup, and come back refresh. And you have to have a support system that supports that because otherwise you're not gonna be the best parent that you can be right and so when people slowly slowly started figuring out that roommates equals children and my family and they were just like oh my god i didn't know you were a mom i was like by design because once you tell somebody you're a mom that's all you are in their eyes mm. you are not your own person you are a mom at the end of like that is all you can be in their eyes and i was like no we women deserve more than that because we handle so much, we do so much in our daily lives that it's it's shame on you for putting that one label on me and saying, oh, you're just a mom. It's like, don't put just in front of mom. I'm not just a mom. I'm raising human beings. I'm making sure that a, an, a, an adult human being is not dying from a heart attack because he eats like an idiot. Okay? <laughs> like, so you're, you're more than a mom. Ashkwanganda. <laughs> We should get like royalties or Honestly, something. Honestly, give us the Can money. We get a brand deal. You know we deserve it. <laughs> um, you know what? You're so right, and I actually will will remember this conversation deeply when I speak about women. I think I always associate moms because I didn't really have one. Yeah. So it's more of a. Um, it's a yearning. A, it's a have, yearning yeah. for sure. That nurturing, and I I just love to see how like loving and nurturing moms are but it is true you you are a woman and I think what as women you know you discuss this because I feel like we don't talk about this enough not to go back to the mom thing but no we can you um we talk a lot about trauma mm -hmm. and we talk a lot about depression we talk a lot about mental health and I still don't think there's enough conversation around um the depression that you feel after having a baby and like yeah, the loss of that yeah. and did you experience that after having the kid, after having your babies? Yeah. Um, my first child, roommate number two. He... I love that you call them roommates. And I will never talk, say kids again, yeah. ever. No. Sometimes I call them crotch goblins. <laughs> Sometimes they're semen survivors. You know? Just depends on how I feel that day. Yeah. Or, or how they're behaving. Yes. <laughs> Assholes. You know? Not to their face. Never to never, their face. Never, never, never. Never to no. their face. Um, <laughs> We're not rude. No, I'm not really an <laughs> asshole. I just play one on your screen. <laughs> um, no, I so, but in all seriousness, I did. Um, you know, after I had after I had him, he was born six weeks early, so that meant he was in the NICU, mm. and I had a really bad. I was with with, with a really bad OBGYN office where they didn't really do a good job with first time moms, which I was, right? And so, you know, it was it was an emergency situation didn't even realize that this was a possibility. Like, I didn't know that I don't have birthing hips until I had my second kid. And that new OBGYN told me, girl, you can't deliver your child naturally. You don't have birthing hips. Your hips don't open wide enough. Your pelvic Wait, bones. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's a thing. Yes, I didn't know that. I, I was like, how am I just learning about this at my second pregnancy? And I got so mad, you know? But going back to your original question, you know, after he, you know, I went home and he was in the NICU, had to go the, do the back and forth thing. And, and then he comes home and I just slowly, like, I slowly found myself, you know, I would be going to get groceries by myself. 
and I would be driving over a bridge. And I'm like, if I just if I just kind of <clears throat> nobody would care. And once I started having more thoughts like that, that's when I was like, this is not good. I need to fix this because I'm I'm assuming that my child wants me in the in his life, right? So I'm hoping that he does. I, I delivered I made him, delivered him, you know, all that. And so then without telling my husband, without telling anybody, because depression, mental health is a taboo subject in our culture, which is very shameful. Like it's bad art like that's when people are like, oh my God, India is so beautiful. It's such a great culture. I'm like, fuck you. Okay. Like you, you're seeing it as a tourist. You are not seeing it as a native. You're not seeing it as somebody who struggles with these taboos and these prejudices where if, you know, if somebody has a heart attack, yeah, they'll go to the doctor, they'll get medicine, they'll get better. But if somebody is having mental issues, they're, they're shamed into, they're, they're just automatically called a crazy person. And then they're they're sent to go live at the temple and, and no one takes care of them and no one nurtures them and no one. So knowing that that's what I was living in, I was like, I need to fix this myself. So I went and found a therapist and the therapist was like, I can't prescribe prescriptions. So I was like, OK, I went and found a psychologist. I went on like, you know, antidepressants for so long. And then I felt so alone in this that whole journey because I didn't have anybody to talk to. I had transplanted from Connecticut to Chicago, got married, a year later had a baby, so I couldn't even make like friends of my own. And the only place as an adult that you can make friends is at work. And so I'm trying to make friends at work, but I'm like, these people are idiots. I don't fucking like them, you know? And so I had no friends, the my no family except my husband, who, you know, let's face it, it I mean, we were still babies. We were still learning how to be with each other and, and learning our personalities. Like we were so young. Like, do I regret having children young? No, because I love my children. However, I wish we had waited a little bit so that we could have had a stronger bond. So then I, st you know, I, I finally told my husband a year and a half later because I would I would like scrounge up whatever money my mom gave me because she would still slip me money thinking that I'm five mm -hmm. and I would use that to pay the therapist. Like he didn't know because I wasn't using our credit cards. I was, and then I finally told him, and he was like, "What? Why are you taking medicine? You shouldn't be taking." Because again, he wasn't educated. And then, you know, I was on antidepressants for seven years, and then I got pregnant with my second kid. And you know, you read all the articles. Like when I got pregnant, I stopped drinking caffeine. I went, yeah, like, I got healthy because I was like, I'm responsible. I am baking something. I am making a human being, and I don't want to fuck this kid up. And so I went like, it was so hard. I went like almost vegan, everything, because I wanted to give him, whoever this alien was, the yeah. best opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work because my body's like, fuck this shit, eviction. Yeah. <laughs> my Get body's out. not like alien, like foreign things in it. <laughs> Just yeah. And the babies were not, they, they, my body's like, this is foreign. I don't like it. Get the fuck out, right? <laughs> so then I stopped, when I got pregnant, again, I again stopped. I stopped the antidepressants. I stopped the caffeine again and I got worried about stopping the antidepressants because when you're on it, you can't just stop cold turkey. Yeah, right. You have to wean off of it. And I was like, no, I don't want antidepressants to fuck with the baby's health. Right. Do everything that you can when you get Ugh. pregnant. And then I, I was just gauging. I was like, OK, how do I feel? Do I feel OK? Am I getting overwhelmed? Am I doing this? Am I in hindsight, which is obviously we know 2020. Definitely was on the wrong antidepressants because it made me worse than better. And but then the positive is that I ended up getting off of the antidepressants because of the pregnancy and I never went back on it. And I was able to kind of just I thought I was doing a good job self-regulating and stuff. Right. And when people hear about the fact that I had postpartum, they're like, oh, my God. I'm like, are you, in my brain, I'm like, are you shaming me for this right now? Like, your face looks like you're shaming me. But mentally, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, we should just be accepting of, like, if you were going to accept that my husband just had a heart attack, then you should accept that I have depression. Yeah. It, to me, it's no different. Right. It's all affecting your mind, body, and soul. Yeah. And so, like, my biggest thing, and, you know, when I did the podcast before, when people asked me, like, what do you hope your platform brings to people? And that's like, I want to take every single taboo subject and want to blow it out of the waters. Yeah. I want to be like, there's no taboo subject. I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear people gasp when I say, I told my kids that their grandmother has breast cancer. Like 
the the amount of shit I got. Oh my god, you told your boys that your mom has breast cancer. I'm like, but why wouldn't you? It's a medical condition. Shame on you for sexualizing it. Just like if their dad has. Wait, I'm sorry. They sexualized the breast yeah, cancer so, diagnosis. So I was telling family. They're like, "Oh, how's your mom doing?" I was like, "Oh no, she's got breast cancer. She's dealing with this. She's getting, you know, she, they're 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 taking care of it." But it, it was it was a shock to us, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not a cr- like I'm not a crier. Like I I call it rage crying. My eyes just leak when I'm mad, right? Uh. But like in certain situations, I like was bawling right like when someone tells you they have cancer whatever cancer it is immediately your brain goes from zero to 100 you're like oh my god they're gonna die because that's what society has taught us like there are some people who have been able to survive it luckily my mom they caught it early but i would tell family members and they're like you told you told the boys that your mom had breast cancer and then when i hear it that way i'm like why like i challenge them why? Yeah, why is it? Why is it taboo? Why exactly? Wait, is it? T- is that a cultural thing? Yeah, I don't know if it's it's a cultural thing or an ignorance thing. I, d- I'm I'm pretty sure it's a hybrid of both, because anytime you talk about any sexual part of the body, like your breasts or your vagina or your penis, like I'm using medical terms right now. I'm not saying dick and pussy. Okay, like I'm talking to my children about a medical condition that a family member has. It does not matter what body part that that condition is on. If even if someone had testicular cancer, it is cancer. But we also have like walks and runs and National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Like this is not a taboo thing. Yeah, and I got that's why I challenged uh. this person when they got all like like clutching their pearls like oh, you told the boys? Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Why? Why should I not tell them that? Like, I'm sorry, but I didn't want them to know that their grandmother had a medical condition when she died and I had to tell them how she died. Right. Like, they're close. Even though my mother is in Connecticut, they're very close to her. Like, they love when we visit. When yeah. We either go there. She comes to us. They love it. Like, my younger sons constantly, as soon as I tell, like, I cannot tell him that Ushaba is coming until the day she comes. So he'd be like, why, when is she coming? Can I go to get her? Can I go with you? Do I have to go to school? Do it? He loves her. And so I'm like, no, like the only way that we are going to get around this uncomfortableness is if we talk about these things. Yeah. And we talk about it in a mature way. And the mature way is using the medical terms for the body parts. But also I think that's so fascinating because I think that a lot of people don't realize what triggers are for some people. And I would never in a million years think that somebody would sexualize breast cancer. That's the only Um, thing I could think of, like why they got all like. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that that's like we've got this weird relationship with sex even in america like everywhere it's like a weird relationship that we have with our own bodies with other people's bodies with sex like you can't even tell people like if you if if you're having a conversation with people and they're talking about books and you, you have to be careful if if like i love reading literature like i don't care anymore i used to- i'm sorry literature i want to mm-hmm. i want to roll this back what the fuck is literature and what a name. It's soft porn. <laughs> Reverse harem, vampires and werewolves, and magician. Vampires and werewolves mm-hmm. and magicians. Okay, and are these werewolves, they're with the magicians sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. There's usually one of each mm-hmm. in the reverse harem. Ooh. Right? Because mm-hmm. you have a lot of holes, so you gotta yeah. fill them all. Obviously. I mean, you don't know that. Well, I used to have pores. I'd like to fill those. That's true. So, but you can't say that, okay? Because going back to that, like, if you're not one of those like frou frou readers, right? Like, well, I read a New York New York Times bestseller. That should be a New York Times bestseller. Literature. Literature. We could be so much better as a society if we were all getting pleased the way that we deserved. Yes. Literature. Literature. It's clitorating. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, do you feel that you could be an author in your future? Probably. Could you write literature? I probably could. Don't I think you really could? Yeah. I think you could tear some literature up. I was so Sarah Buckley. Yeah. She she had some of that in her set yesterday. That's right. That's right. Yes. Because we're friends with Sarah Buckley. And and so we were in the green room. And I was like, girl, 
We need to start a book club, a literature book club. We can call it the Click Club. It's just getting better. The so Click Club. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm gonna We're think about this all day. George. He's like, oh my I, god. I fucking love this. <laughs> George, yeah. do you, have you ever heard of literature? No, no, I do know it. Like uh, soft porn. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's like a Christian tab of Gray? it on Pornhub. Yeah, like you can like read stories yeah. that people write. Yeah. Maybe that's where you should start. Yeah. Oh. On Pornhub. Where the? You know oh, what? Yes. What has Oprah really done for us? Nothing. Just give it. Fuck make, her book club. Yeah. Never said anything about literature. Never. That is true. This is what the women of the world need. Yeah. Do you know how many people read literature? So many people. I didn't know it existed. Yes, but it does. You know how I know this because of the fact. Stay there. Yes, because of the fact. That there, every time I've tried to get those fucking books that Bridgerton was based off of, yeah. I have still not been able to get book one. I go to my library because I like reading the books and I like when like characters span, you know, in a series. They yes, just, obviously. Just, yeah, because you want to know what they're doing afterwards, right? Like, I don't like when a book ends because it's like, oh, what are they doing later? I want to know if they got old and happy, you know? Right. And then they continue. I still cannot read that. And we're about to be on season three of Bridgerton. Okay, but see, I also feel like literature is kind of iconic because you, instead of TV programs, you're like envisioning it yourself with the way that yes. you would like it. Yes. So I see the benefit here yes. with the literature. However, I however, I can only read literature if the woman on the cover, it like kind of looks like me so I can pretend it's me. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Like if the woman is blonde, I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. No, you want the woman to look like us. Yeah, like, like just, okay. just dark hair. It, they don't have to look Indian, but just dark hair. But just dark. I know. But and that's also really... you're doing so much for the culture. Maybe you should be doing Indian literature. No, no. I have. So I follow a mutuals with two South Asian writers and I've read their books and I'm like, yes, keep going. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, because that's what we need. George, are you pulling something up that I need to know about? I, no, I Because it looks I like you're up. hard at work over there. Yeah, I mean, I had to look this up. <laughs> I die, like no, story. same. George, read us. George, give me, put Here's it up. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I realized after seeing this, I just don't like reading. Um, and that's the oh, for God's issue. sake, George, that's in but, there. No, but like, it, it's good. Oh, it's good. There's lots of dialogue back and forth. Let me see. Read. I want you to read two sentences from literature. Okay. He's going to pick the most mundane right, get into the, gonna... Don't pick the most mundane, boring one either. Okay. okay. Get nasty with it. Okay. I was leaned back in the seat. The skirt pushed well up over my hips. Thong <laughs> digging into the flesh of my thigh moaning into his arm yes. and praying the movie soundtrack hit us from the others in the theater. George, you are so spectacular. George! You could do audiobooks. Do you want to do literature audiobooks? Whoa. I Now, if I get paid now for it, I will love reading. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the best reader ever. George! Um, but the thing is, women love reading the soft porn romance literature books because sex for women is mental. Yes. Like we, if you want to have sex with us at night, you need to start your, you need to pregame in the morning. That means you need to be like, hey, babe, do you need help with breakfast? Do you need help with dinner? Do you need help with the lot? Like you, that's, that is what's going to get our jollies so that we could, you could fuck us later at night. Okay, see, I love I this. Said, now, I, in lesbian culture, it's different because I feel like we both as women, like me and my fiance, right? Yeah. Like we know that if I'm like, I'm putting a load in the the laundry and she's like, I'm going to fold them. Yes. And put them away. Yes. God. Yes. We're going to You're going to cream your pants. Cream my pants. Yeah. And she talks like that because that's what she likes. It's easy for women because yeah. we know what we. Exactly. It take, we'll do the whole mental game. Yeah. But I've never seen literature like this. I want to read about it. You've never I, read literature? Never. I you didn't, didn't know it existed. You didn't read the Christian Grey books? No, I didn't. Oh my God. So you don't know about the Red Room of Pain? I don't know shit about the Red Room of Pain. You what saw the, the movie. Hell? You I saw didn't them. see the movie. What? What? I never saw the Even movie. Even George saw the movies. Hell Look yeah, I saw the, mo I saw the movie on Valentine's Day. And then I, yeah, at the time we were in high school. So Cameron and I found a parking spot. And then oh. It was easy. George that, has been with his girls since they were in high school, and they're the cutest couple in the whole world. What is, is this true. with Nevada and Las Vegas? Everybody's with their high school sweethearts forever. I think it's something in the water. 
I, something. Maybe yeah, not so, me. I just I, mean, I didn't. I left high school and I was like, bye, motherfuckers. Yeah, you. And were then also I did end Hollywood. up being with a woman from Vegas. So there it's go. that's how it goes. Okay, wait. This but, is but iconic. That, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, yes, even in America, sex is a taboo subject. Like, but, look at all look at all the people who are in porn that get shamed. Yeah, it's like they're they're just they're doing a job. Man, no one ever said if they liked it or not. You're assuming that they like it because you watch it on your screen and they're good at acting. How about they're just really good actors and actresses, right? Like yeah. to each their own. Like we were talking on our walk yesterday, like, oh, it would be great to be a stripper because, you know, you get so much money, but no one has to touch you. And it's like, yeah, but we'd have to like, you know, make sure that like there's bodyguards and like we get logistically. <laughs> <laughs> And like, make sure like it's it's not like a strip club where like it's you know business. mafia bosses go because then they would touch like I couldn't touch you because I'm a mafia boss you know shit like that yeah <laughs> wait I literally just had Lou and Elle on this week and we did a ten minute segment about how much we're obsessed with strippers and sex workers because first of all they're beautiful I love them I think they're fantastic and it's a business and I feel like it's so weird to shame people for yeah, that yeah it's like why don't you shame the people getting their services instead of the actual people do you shame waitresses no they're bringing you fresh hot food bitch get the fuck out of here and so are strippers hot buns hot buns so don't disrespect hot cross buns that's do, right do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have so many things to look forward to. Ashkawanda, which obviously George ordered. Literature. <laughs> I need to know more about the Red Room pain. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Christian Grey. The Christian red... Grey, Red Room. I don't know why I didn't. I I think I was in an unhappy relationship, and I just didn't want to watch it with my partner because I didn't want to be forced to do things. Not forced. I was, it was very, no, no, no. no, no. no yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I yeah. just wasn't even, I was annoyed. Yeah. I'm an easily annoyed human being. Also, I have intimacy issues. We're working on it, though. It's fine. Need literature. You're for ever that. evolving. Thank you so much. <laughs> listen, I love you. I'm so grateful that you did the podcast with me today. Yeah, it was too. fun. It was listen, fun. Listen, I know you're so funny, and I feel like everybody knows that. But I always feel like it's so nice to see, like, I think it's really important, especially, like, with your TikTok fame. I feel like it's very easy to be like, oh, she went on TikTok in the pandemic and gained this large following. And it's so much more than that. And to know that like you had these bouts of depression and having to be shamed for it mm -hmm. and taking medicine and not talking about, like these are such real things, things that you never actually come out of. And for you to be selling out fucking theaters and being on tour that's a big deal even if there's listen <laughs> even the woman coming up to you like you have <laughs> yeah. to be uh, you I, have like to it be... makes me feel pretty like i'm not gonna lie right whoever whoever tells you that they don't love getting recognized out in the wild by strangers is fucking full of shit okay yeah who like when somebody comes up to you and says oh my god i love you who doesn't like that? Like that is the only reason why people continue to make social media content is because the positive comments are driving them, right? They are seeing that people are engaging with their content. Like there are some idiots who the negative comments drive them more, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about the people that the positive comments, they feed them. And I'm one of those people. And I love, like, I'm like, yes, finally, yes, this is me. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, I try yeah. to keep it tame. No, <laughs> but it's true. I, I love that you said that because I think the number one motivator in everything and the one primal need is love. Yeah. You want to be loved. And we can say all day, well, it's self-love. No, bitch, no. I'm struggling and I'm still working through, through, through some Listen, things. Listen, I can do self-love all day, every day with my yeah. dildo, but that's not going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I need other, like, I need to, like, for me, I don't know if it's the sixth love language or whatever it is. But I, that those positive comments, the laughter words of affirmation. From, yeah, the the positive comments, the the laughter from the audience, the the why like the the recognize recognition in the wild, like all of that feeds me to want to continue to make content, to yeah. want to continue to do shows. Like I said, like and and it, it is it's it's sometimes it's a mental game, right? Like I'll look at ticket counts and they're not as much as they were the first year, and it's like okay, well. Pinky, remember, it's the economy and it's this and it's like, look at all of the things of why it's not you, because then you start internalizing it. You're like, maybe, maybe, maybe I had my 15 minutes of fame and I'm like, maybe I'm one of those people. Yeah, but don't do that to yourself either yeah. because I love this story. And if you want to tell it, I don't want to, I don't want to take over any more of your time, but you have this great story. I think that's so inspiring as um, you left corporate.
corporate, you left your corporate job Mm -hmm. and pursued your passion very successfully. And I think people are, I think if anything, people are just afraid. We live in a fear-based society. We're taught all of these things. Mm -hmm. We're taught to rely on so many things. And the email that you actually wrote, when you did leave your corporate job. How did you know about that? You didn't because even see I know show. everything. Because I did my homework. Just because I didn't go to the show doesn't mean I didn't do my fucking homework because you're an icon. Oh my God. That's scary. Are you part of the CIA? <laughs> the Russian mafia? No, I am. I, well, I am Russian. Brotska or whatever I am, it's I'm called. Italian Russian. <laughs> <laughs> but can you just tell it? Well, I don't want you to say anything that. No, I'll say it. It's, it's fine. in your show. No, it's fine. So I. So it, during the pandemic, you know, they said work from home. And I was like, yes, finally, I hate these bitches. So I get to work from home, right? And I get to do my job without the fucking drama <laughs> of being in the I office. I hate these bitches. Yeah, because what was happening, okay, Michaela, was like, I would be sitting at my desk doing my stuff, tippy tapping, tippy tapping. And then I'd hear over the wall, oh my God, do you know how to do this? No, I don't know. I think it's this way. And they would teach each other stupid shit. And I'm like, you're going to fuck it up. And then I'm going to have to fix it. I don't have time to fix it, okay? <laughs> Because I was a fixer. I was the person that would go in being the IT Indian and fix shit. And I got tired of fixing shit because these fucking bitches didn't know how to do it and follow training documents, okay? I fucking hated it. And so they were like, go home. And I was like, yes, I can go home. (laughs) And during that whole time, 2020, I was trying, like, and before that, I was trying to, like, get out of the department, right, get another position or get out of the company because I was like, I've reached my prime. They're not going to let me go any further because they know that what they have is too good to be true. They were making me do the job of six people without giving me a team of five people, right? And I was like, no. Why is it always like that? Yeah, they're like, oh, your position doesn't have any ROI, so we can't get you any any associates. I was like, fuck you and your mom, okay? (laughs) And so was it a hard decision? No, because I knew my time there was done, but... It was a difficult decision just because of the fact that I have this stable job that's bringing me a paycheck every two weeks, a good one, because I worked very hard. Like, I didn't know I was meant to be a career woman until I did it, and then I was succeeding 100%. And then, you know, knowing all of these (laughs) things, like, I have to put kids through college, that's coming up, all that shit. So when we finally made that decision of I have to quit, like, I probably threw up in my mouth 50 million times. Because I was like, can I do this? Can I can I do this? Can I not? And we went back and forth. We were like, is it? And at the end of the day, I I had to quit because I didn't have enough vacation days to do the tour and to do the job. Oh, like I would have done both of it if they had fought to keep me on. Because because in the corporate world, if they really want to keep you, they will increase your pay. They'll give you more vacation. They will do whatever they can to keep you. But because they didn't want to keep me. They were like, okay, bye. And I was like, peace out, bitches. And you fucking left corporate. Yeah. And how long were you in corporate for? Um, from 2004, when I got married, to two years ago. 16, 17, Fuck. 18. That was, a, it's almost like a full baby, like a full yeah. adult. adult. You were in child. corporate. Yeah, I had an adult. And then you said, fuck this. Yeah, that, that so the obligatory last day email that you have to send out. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I put everybody that I worked with, the CEO of the company, the VP of the department. I have the, the email framed. Oh, I in love my it. vagina cave. And I and it, subject said, okay, bye. <laughs> and I started with hello, my prince. <laughs> you did not. I did. And in parentheses, I wrote hashtag if you know, you know. <laughs> and they knew. <laughs> Did you ever hear back from anybody in the company? They tried to get me, like one of them who was my avid fan. She was like, oh my God, we're having a Christmas party. Can you can you do your show? And so I was like, here's my manager's email address. And my yeah. manager was like $10,000. And they were like, no, thank you. I was like, okay then. Okay, bye. Yeah. Oh my God, that's the the best story I've ever heard in my life. I have yet to I have yet to know if they've ever come to one of my shows. Like I know some have that support me because they were in my department. Like I supported them. Like we we became close. Like I know they did because they made it a point to like they bought VIP tickets. I was like, you know, you didn't need to buy uh... VIP tickets. Like I would have taken a picture with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> but but that's what I'm saying. Like my whole entire support system at home, in real life, they 
come out to shows even if they've seen the show. They buy the tickets. Yeah. They buy the VI. They buy the most expensive ticket. And I'm like, guys, like I love that you guys are gonna come out, but you don't need to buy VIP tickets. Like you don't. I'm gonna take pictures with you. Like, <laughs> but they're like, no, this is money for you and the kids. <laughs> so, I love that. I though. love that. They I'm... come out wearing crowns. Like my ladies, they love it every time. They're like, when are you back again? When are you back again? <laughs> They they hate going into the city, but they drove into the city last time. Worth it. it was you're worth it. I loved it. Listen, you're so inspiring, and I do hope you know that. I hope that just like as a woman, just as a comic, just as someone who left corporate and successfully did their passions, it's just so nice to meet I'm you. Lucky. It's so nice to know you. <laughs> Thank it's you. so nice to hear your advice and oh, your God. story, and it's so fucking relatable. I hope so. And I think people are really lucky to have you. I hope so. I love it. I, I just knowing that I can, you know, at meet and greets, the first year was kind of a shock because people would oh, come yeah. up and they'd be like, oh my God, you helped me during the pandemic. You helped me during, like, and it would get heavy. I'm like, oh my God are you okay right now? Like they would be crying because they were so like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. Like I, I could be gone tomorrow. Like they were treating me as if I was like some big A-list celebrity. And well, you're I, their best friend. I know. And I was just like, Oh, I hope you have a good support system at home. And if you don't, I'm so sorry. Like feel free to use my content as free serotonin hits. Like, but that's I what I'm saying. Like, I hope that you understand that your support system is very far and few between, and you are the support system it's for 5.4 million people. It's, I, I get awed by it. Like, I'm just like, I didn't know that this, this was a possibility. And so I'm hoping that it never wears down. Like, I hope the shininess, it never gets dull. Because like the moment I stop getting nervous diarrhea, and the moment that 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 like when someone approaches me, I don't get happy to see them. I know that that's when I'm done, and I don't want that feeling to ever come. Because I don't. Yeah, but ever you've got V. She'll done. never let that happen. Yeah, Ravina's she'll be like, like, get your shit together. Yeah, she'll be like, why were you a bitch to her? I'd be like, oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to be a bitch. I'm just having a bad day. <laughs> um, before you leave, can we just have a little hello from Usha advice? For anybody that may be uh, needing a little pick me up on this fine day, you could just give a little hello. Oh no, I don't know. I don't know it on the spot. Okay, you don't have to do it on the spot. Fuck it, we won't do it at all. No, don't do that to me. So I'm gonna give you diarrhea. I gotta <laughs> just, just roll, roll it back. It's not I that do, deep. It's not that deep. They'll follow you on TikTok, yes. Instagram, everywhere at. Pinky Pinky Patel Patel official. official. And then you're still touring. Yes. So where can people go to find tickets to come see you? I know you're doing London, which my Spice Girl in me is screaming inside. Oh, London, Ontario. Okay. You don't have to yell. It was fucking just a mistake. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm hoping I end up in the UK in in November. Hopefully I'll be doing. Okay. 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 We'll revisit that. So I'm still, I'm, I'm, we're doing the last leg of the second tour. New crown with this. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I love I that name because <laughs> it's my new life. So we were like, it has to kind of jive with is. it. So I think um, I'll be in upstate New York, Syracuse, um, Buffalo. Buffalo, and then I'll be in Toronto, Ontario, London, Ontario, and then there's so many more. And then I take a break, and then we start a third tour in fall. Fuck. Yeah, we don't know what to call it yet. We're toying with Lady Balls of Steel, and hashtag I said what I said because I always say that. Wait, I love hashtag I said what I said. Well, you can't take it. No, I would never take it. But I would like to put my vote in for it. Yeah. For you. Maybe maybe we can maybe we can ask people in a story. Yeah, you should ask pick. your followers. Because uh, the, um, a good part of the show is going to be like what I thought of my hysterectomy and stuff. Because that's another yeah. thing we don't talk about. Like I, I was trying to, I didn't realize so many people have, I knew women had hysterectomies. But again, it's not like. An, an option that's given to us readily and unless you have a really good doctor. Listen, I didn't have a really, I don't have a relationship with my mother, but the one thing that sticks out to me the most of my childhood, she had a hysterectomy when I was maybe 10 and she was devastated, obviously, you know, obviously. And I said, I didn't understand it. Um, and I said, well, do you feel okay? And she, she said, I'm just not a woman anymore. No, that's false. And that false. was how she felt. And this was yeah. 25 years yeah, ago. Yeah. There was no support system for yeah. that kind of thing. And she didn't want a hysterectomy. She didn't want kids anymore, but she didn't want to lose that 
what what she felt made her feel like a woman. Right. My mom also she had a hysterectomy young, just like I did, and she was shamed for it. Um, for her, it was a medical condition, just like it was for me. And they were like, "Well, what if what if you need to have another son?" And she's like, "What is what is that going to do? Me having another son." It's not going to replace the first son I had if he ended up dying. Like, that's not how children work. You don't just have more to replace the ones that died. Like, that, that's, that's, that's not how, like, are you stupid? Like, what the fuck is wrong did with you? you? Did your mother lose a baby? No, but our culture. Oh, in your culture. Yeah, Got because it. she only had one son. Got it. And I wasn't good enough to, you know, inherit anything. Because I don't know anything about Did money. that give you any self-worth issues? Yeah, right? <laughs> God. But, no, I mean, people, going back to the... Tickets. <laughs> yeah, good. She said what she fucking said. Tickets. You can find wherever I am, whatever cities I'm coming to, um, tickets, all that at pinky-patel.com. Done. You can follow her on TikTok, follow her on Instagram. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we can still talk about history. No, no. But like, no, I want you to say, I just, I actually, I forgot. I, to... If I forget, and then I just, it just adds. No, and me too, me too. And I felt like we were talking so much about so many amazing things. But I, I'm happy that you're talking about that. Because I, I, I only said that. Are you, how are you feeling? I feel, I feel pretty good. I mean, there's, right now, I think I'm, I just finished two months since I had it. And so it's Shit. still a baby about it. Not not like that, but like I try to make sure that I'm not like lifting too much or whatever. But I'm just you know, if my body feels like it's tired, I don't ignore it anymore, like how I used to. I just I'm like, peace out, I'm going upstairs. I'm lay down and then, You feel like it made you set better boundaries? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. It it made me see my family in a different light as well. Cause going into it, it's a major surgery, even though they try to downplay it. I'm like, you're taking a fucking organ I was born with. It's not a routine surgery. Okay? Yeah. Don't call it a routine fucking surgery. Um, but I was worried how the family would do because I'm so present when I'm home. Like, I'm the one that, that does and coordinates and handles, like, between the kids and the geriatrics and the dog. And, like, there's just so many hats, so many balls juggling. And so I was like, you know, and, and also did it a week before Christmas. And we do an annual Christmas Eve party. And because of fucking COVID and everything else, like it, it took a while to get that back on track. Yeah. And our nieces and nephews family, like we all look forward to this party because it's the one time of the year that we get to see everybody in one place. Right. And so I told my husband, I was like, and the kids, I, I sat them all three down. I was like, are you prepared to do everything for this party? Because once I have this surgery on the 18th, I will not be able to help anything. I will not be able to lift anything until February 18th. Shit. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not risking my health because I have to be ready when this tour starts back up again to go ham because it's just the two of us. And I was like, I, I can't leave everything to Ravina to do. I can't, she can't be lifting all the luggage and all that shit, right? Like I, I need to be like, we are a team. We divide and conquer. I don't expect her to do everything. She doesn't expect me to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I never would be that kind of person because mm -hmm. I come from a work environment where I was expected to do everything and not shown any gratitude, you know? And so the kids and my husband were like, no, we got this. So they fucking cleaned the whole entire house. They, I helped with as much decorations as I could and they did the rest of it. He, and, you know, normally I would be making dips. I would be doing this, you know, party prep. Yeah. Couldn't do any of that. They did the best that they could. And I, I came down Christmas Eve once everybody got there, just dressed, Aww. made an appearance after I took a Norco. And then I went back yeah. <laughs> two hours later and, and I was everybody was happy. And so it, it made me see my husband and the kids in definitely a different light because my husband, like, he took that whole week off because he knew he would be busy between me and the kids, and the party prep, and everything, and he fucking handled it like a champ. Like, I was so impressed. Mm. I was like, look at you. That's your man. And, uh, yes, and then my mom was there, so she came to help, and so she was able to, like, and she's the type that, like, she can't sit still, so she gets... I don't she, know any women like that in my life, my mother She gets so bored, like, 
No kidding, Michaela. Whenever she visits, she gets so bored. If I'm at work, like she used to come in the summer a lot to help with the kids. So I'd be at work. I'd be like, yay, free babysitter. I'd come home and my bedroom would be clean. And I'm like, why did you do this? I have no idea where anything is now. I She would leave. She comes for two weeks at a time. When she leaves, it takes me four weeks to put my kitchen back in order. <laughs> she changes everything around. She's like, this one needs to go here. This needs to go here. This ne-. I'm like, you're here for two weeks. What the fuck are you doing? She's a psycho. She's a psycho. Why are mothers like that, though? I don't know if that's cultural either. But again, Lisa's mother, same thing. Lisa's mother, is. we're living together. And she, I did my own laundry because that's what I do. I swear to God, I have a photo of this. I Did she fold everything? Fucking, not only did she fold everything, there were 10 hangers across the kitchen with all of my thongs on them. And she did it. she dried them for you. She air dried them for she you. She air dried my thongs. Oh my God, she's so loving. And I was like, Ma, she, I call her Mamala. I said, Mamala, why are my thongs across the kitchen? She said, well, it's not good if they dry in the dryer. It's not good for the material. <laughs> And I don't really know. I said, there's really not much there to begin with. She said, I know. You're like, you're worried about wrinkles on a thong? And she's so conservative. So it's mind blowing. But she took it so seriously. And each thong had their own hanger across the fucking kitchen. She was nervous that they would not, they would stretch out. And I was like, just give me the cheese streak. Thank you so much. Just give me the fucking... But it's done with so much love. It is. What it's am I going to so, do? Yeah, like my mother-in-law will like fold the clothes. Like I'll, we'll bring the laundry up or they'll bring it up. Yeah. The hamper. Yeah. And like she'll be like, oh, and then she'll fold it. But like she folds it how she knows, right? I and at that, that point. I know. Yeah, I'm just like, this is, this is, why would you fold the t-shirts? Like what do you, what do you, but I can't say no because no. she's helping out. And I'm just like. And Ugh. it's done with love. It's but totally keep done it with love. in the fucking dryer. It's not done yet. <laughs> Shirts, pants, st- everything stresses her out. She's terrified. She buy. I don't know if you deal with this, and then we'll really go. She <laughs> likes to buy a lot of food, but terrified it won't be eaten. So we have to eat every single thing in the fridge, the pan. It doesn't even. It doesn't even matter. She'll. She'll get so nervous. She'll fucking eat the things, and she's <laughs> full. She's like, can't waste this banana. <laughs> like just. Freaking out. It's been nice though. I, I like her. <laughs> but it's been great. <laughs> I'm having a really good time. Maybe I'll, I'll maybe we'll watch Fifty Shades of Grey together, really to stress yeah. her out. Yeah. 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 Pinky, Audiobooks. I love you. I'm so happy that you're here. Abs- I I'm love so happy it. that you're healthy. And I'm glad we were able to do this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for coming. I know you're fucking so busy. No, no, no. And and please go to pinkypatelofficial.com. Also, your podcast. Please, yes, Pecos Puck. Yeah, huh? Pecos Puck. We just started it. Um, Pecos Puck. Pecos Puck, because we like to call so all things Pecos Puck, and it just it, that just originated because you know when you get together with your girlfriend, you realize you're having really good conversation, and then you're like, dang, we make each other laugh. We probably make other people laugh. We should just set up a camera and record it, and then we corporatize the fuck out of the meetings and. Genius. We just we were like, this is the timetable. This is what we're doing. Like, the three of us got on weekly phone calls, and then we started banking episodes starting like January, early February. Like, she would come to my house. We turned my basement into something like this. Like, we got box lights and everything. Yeah. Like it's 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 crazy to see how our lives have evolved in this this new entertainment world that we never even thought we would be a part of. Uh-huh. And and it's just. We just we genuinely have these amazing topics that we talk about and we're like, I think I feel like this will resonate with other people. And just because like I've tried to search podcasts that like are a little bit more relatable to me being Indian and being first generation raised in America. And that's really hard to find um, because a lot of it is a lot of the podcasts that are out there, brown versions. They, they want to obviously amplify. They want to upsell the culture and all that. But I'm like, no, we need to talk about all of it. There's definitely the beautiful part of India, but there's also 
the other parts where you need to be, you need to go into this culture, into this country with eyes wide open. Yeah. Like India is not all about Bollywood. India is not all about the Taj Mahal, you know, the gateway to whatever. It India is also about the villages. It's about these small huts that don't even have running water going to them. It's about people who have to go to the river to get drinking water. It's about all of these things. And a lot of people don't realize it. Like I I when I I was born in a village in India that did not have any running water coming to it. And when people find like hear that, they're like, wait, what? But you're so well spoken. I'm like, are you racist? Like, no, there this is this is what we want to bring out to the world. Me and my friend Priyanka. Like we want people to know what it's really like in the culture. Not just the, oh, it's so beautiful. We love it. The culture's so beautiful. It's like every time I hear somebody foreign say that, I want to just throat punch them yeah. because they don't know what it's really like. They just know what YouTube puts out there, what people put on YouTube or the Bollywood movies, which obviously makes everything look beautiful, yeah. right? But we want people to know about the struggles that we've had with, in like our first episode, we call it's it's about having traditional jobs versus non-traditional jobs. Because this for us, her being a makeup artist and me being a stand-up comedian and, and content creator is a non-traditional job in our culture. Like, do you know any Indian comedians? Now we do. Not from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Not from the 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I ask you name one famous Indian person in America, everybody either says Mindy Kaling or they say Lily Singh. Yeah. <coughs> And Lily Singh is only since like 2016, 15, right? It's right. not like. Right. Yeah. Like we, we weren't even allowed to be on that scene. And, and are we even now? You know, and, they, and so we're trying to like open up these conversations. We're trying to make it so that people can learn about what the struggles are. And we throw so much humor into it that you don't even like we don't even feel like we're talking about serious things. Yeah. But if you just if you take out the laughter or you take out the joking, we're talking about serious issues that, that people our age, first generation raised here in America, are dealing with and how we deal with it in hopes that it will help our fellow South Asian women also deal with it. Maybe it's a different perspective. Maybe it's a oh, I should try that also feel empowered to speak up for themselves. And so we're like, Pake as Puck. We're calling out all things Pake as Puck. Pake as Puck. Pake as Puck. I'm so, I it's can't great. wait to listen. YouTube, I love you, Spotify, Pinky. everywhere. Everywhere. And then I can't wait to hear what your new um, tour is going to be, but I, I hope you let us vote. We'll vote. We'll vote. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to a vote. Yeah. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I'll put everything that you're doing uh, underneath. And I, I love you. you got a friend in me in Vegas now, so let me know I'll when you're back. I'll come back when I'm back. We'll do this again. Good. We'll Thank give you. you a life update. I need it. And I'll tell you about my Oscar. Go on to journey. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Okay, bye. Thank you. <laughs> so Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts.